Hi again, everybody. Chris Tisdale here. Thanks for joining me today. In this presentation, I'm going to share with you a new invention of mine uh, designed to improve the learning and teaching of geometry. And basically, it is a circle arc template that you can see in the background. So my position on um, the new tool is that it's safer than a compass, it's easier to use, and the drawings are more accurate. So let me give you an example of what I mean. I'm going to show you how you can use the, the circle arc template to uh, bisect an angle, just like you would with, with a regular compass. Okay, so let me share my document camera with you, and um, we can have a look at what's going on. All right, so let, let's say, um, I mean, this, this template's got a lot of shapes. In it. I'm, I'm going to be using this Pac-Man type shape, and I'm going to be using the straight edge. That's all you need for, for classical geometry that you see in, um, in high school and the constructions that you're asked to do. All right, so let me draw in a, um, an angle. Okay, so let's start it over there. And I'll just draw another one over here. All right. And let's label that, label the points, call them, say, A, B, and C. And so one of the classic constructions that you see in high school, and it's been around for literally thousands of years, is to cut this angle in half. That's what we mean when we talk about bisecting an angle. So we want to draw or construct some line segment that emanates from B and cuts the angle ABC in two. Okay, so I'll show you some moves and then I'll give it some justification. All right, so I'm going to take my circle arc template and place it at the point B. And... I'm going to draw an arc there. Now notice the arc cuts uh, the line segment BA at one point and the other line segment BC at one point as well. So what we've actually done there is created two new points, say point D and point E. All right, so the next step in this classic construction is to use the point D and the point E as the center of a new circle. So let me switch over. I'll go to brown on this one. So I'm going to draw in an arc there. And I'm going to move my center to the point E. And I'm going to draw in an arc there. Now, I've been quite strategic with that because you can see those two arcs cross at a point. And the very last step is to just draw a point, a, a line segment from B to this point of intersection. So let's label that point. Um, what are we up to? Let's call it F. Okay, call that F. And the very last move, I'll use blue for this is to use your straight edge on the paper to come up with the line segment BF. And you could extend that as a ray if you wanted to. Okay. So the challenge was to bisect the angle ABC. All right, and we did that with a number of moves. So let me just go through and um, do a little bit of justification here. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just connect a few more things. You can see BE is a radius of our circle. BD is the radius of our circle. And because it's the same circle, well, they must be the same. And if I connect, E and F and D and F. You might remember that we draw, we constructed two circles there. 
this line segment is a radius and this line segment is the radius. Now we're working, of course, with one fixed radius throughout. So whenever I talk about you know, a radius, it's always the same radius. All right, so in order to justify my working and my construction, what I would like to do is to show that the angle, say, um, I don't know, DBF equals the angle EBF. That's the same as showing the angle has been split in half. So let's go this way. Okay. So I'm going to actually show angle DBF is equal to angle EBF. That's the same. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, one way is to use um, congruent triangles. This is a very old technique. It's a very common technique. Essentially, I'm going to compare the triangle DBF with the triangle EBF. And you can see that this side has the same length as this side. This side has the same length as this side because they're all radii. And there's a common shared side. So by side, 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 so you have two triangles. They correspond, each of their corresponding sides is equal we have triangle DBF is congruent to triangle EBF. So what does that mean? Well, it means that all the corresponding angles are equal. So angle DBF must equal angle EBF. So I'll call that star. So star holds. All right. So that's like a, a, a gentle justification. Now, back to the tool. What happens, for example, if the angle is much larger? Okay, well, I'm glad you asked. So let me do a, um, a, a small construction using a slightly larger angle. Okay, so let's say I went um, here. And here. All right, so in this case, um, this might be your point A, B, and C. Now, essentially, there's no real difference here. It just looks a bit different, different, but the moves are the same. So let me just repeat the process. I won't um, prove it. So I'm going to take my geometry tool, my circle arc template. I'm going to place it, place it center at the point B. And I'm going to draw an arc. That, of course, creates two new points, just like the previous um, construction. I'll switch over to brown, and I will use these two new points as centers. So let me just make that a bit more visible there. And here's another one. Top tip, when you do this, your, your um, circle arc should meet at the original point B. So now I've got a new point here, which I've constructed, and you would just draw your line segment or your ray through this point and the point B. And I'll extend it just to make sure that it's very clear. Okay. Now, I haven't labeled anything there. Let's see how accurate our working is. Because I know if you've ever used a compass, you'll, you'll understand that a lot of the time it's not accurate at all. And that's one of the things that really bugs me and one of the motivations for me. So let me go here and see if we can work out the angle. So this angle, the original angle, is about 
And this angle here is 67. So there you go, super, super accurate. All right. Now, what have we actually created here? We've created this angle, uh, this um, line segment, and it's cut this original angle in half. Now, a couple of interesting things. Angle bisection is one of the basic moves in constructive geometry, okay? So it's like a basic move and you use this move to do other interesting, more complicated constructions. Another interesting thing is when we have constructed this line, if I have a, say a point here, if I choose any point, this point is equally spaced between this line segment and this line segment. So by bisecting the angle, we're sort of placing something equidistant from the two arms um, of our angle. So now we're thinking about angles and lengths. That's pretty interesting, working out the connections between angles and lengths. Anyway, what do you think? Um, I'm pretty excited about the new tool. It's simple, but um, I really enjoy using it. Let me know if you've ever used something like this or what you think. Um, have you ever had problems with compasses? Uh, if so, tell me your stories. Um, if you have any other comments, put them in the um, comment section below. Uh, it's great to be back. I'm going to be doing lots of construction videos, um, all sorts of weird and amazing constructions that you see in high school. So I really hope it's helpful. All right, thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.